Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, a very quick and informal video. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be so quick actually, uh, but it's an informal video uh, that hasn't got lots of planning, but um, it's more of a conversation really and it's sparked by um, a very, very important um, issue that I think is facing the Kendall community. Um, and as you can see, I've got my wonderful wife Miyuki here to join mm. us today uh, to talk about this. Uh, because what we're talking about is um, how women are represented in Kendall. Uh, and it's, off, it's basically come about, it was a question that was asked of me in Kendall Rant for the Kendall Rant series. Um, but because it's such an important topic, I decided it would be better, um, one, to make a separate video about it because I've, I've got quite a lot to say on it, but two, I'd like to make it together with uh, with my wife, Miyuki, here because um, she's been one of the biggest influences on my own Kendall development, um, and obviously, I think um, her input on this would be really, really valuable as well. I hope you think so, too. Um, before we jump into things, though, uh, don't forget, if you do enjoy the videos, if it does bring you any value whatsoever, you can support the channel by shopping at kendostar.com. That's the website, of course, that I run, um, and yeah, uh, that supports our family. So <laughs> if you like us, shop at Kendall Star. <laughs> okay, so um, what we're talking about is, um, the, like I say, the question was posed to me for Kendall Rant, and it's come off the back of this Facebook post in this uh, group, lady, Ladies Kendall Only. Now, obviously, I'm not a lady, um, <laughs> uh, so I'm not actually a member of this group, but it is a, I think it's publicly visible. Um, so it was shared with me so that I could read it. Um, and I'm going to read it, read through it first, because um, I, I know it's quite long, but bear with me, because I, I do think the content is important. Uh, it's by a friend of mine, Kate Sylvester. Um, hi, Kate, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> Let, let's have a read through. Um, Hello, my Kendo friends. I've been discussing my thoughts with Matsuda Sensei on how females are represented in Kendo magazines, particularly Kendo Jidai and Kendo Nippon. Uh, if any of you read the magazines or follow their Facebook page, pages, you'll find senior ken, uh, female Kendoka or other f uh, senior female Sensei are not represented. I've examined issues of these magazines from the 1980s and find similar representation. Female Ken Kendoka represented are often high school, university or police club members or Mama Kendo practitioners. Uh, the 1980 articles feature female, uh, featuring female university members included their weight. Uh, not important information as there's no weight classes in Kendo. <laughs> That's a really good point, isn't it? Um, more recently, in the past 20 years, there have been more female national team members and younger university club sensei represented in these magazines, but I still feel that, uh, but still, Kendall, uh, sorry, but still female sensei who are over 40 are more or less absent. Uh, hence, we can observe how Kendall media is standardized in Japan. The imagery projected suggests that the knowledge of Kendall and the rite of passage uh, to knowledge is a male domain. In a sense, these magazines marginalize women from knowledge and status by trivializing their participation with representations of physical act attractiveness and youth. Uh, I argue that often women are portrayed for the male gaze, not for their kendo skills and knowledge. Uh, the lack of visibility of female sensei impacts on the number of women that continue kendo and strive to grade at a high level. I'm sure that you have certainly noticed there are very few senior women whom train outside of Japan. When I passed my sixth dan grade in Tokyo, I was amazed at the number of senior women attempting sixth dan. Uh, it was really inspiring. Although there, were no f there are no female eighth dans yet, uh, there are several uh, seventh dan women in Japan, 568 to be exact. Uh, there are also more females passing seventh dan in their 30s. If they receive the support, uh, we may just see a female eighth dan in our lifetime. Uh, I definitely think so. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I feel compelled to post uh, my thoughts here are in reaction to Kendo Nippon's monthly magazine article, Kendo Joshi, uh, which began in 2019. Uh, the articles feature young and attractive female Kendoka who are mostly school-aged or company employees. Not all of these women have achieved anything special in Kendo. The thing that grabbed my attention was the way that Kendo Nippon promotes the monthly article on their Facebook page, which I think is a little problematic. Words like kawaii, utsukushi, akari, uh, genki, um, are all words used to mark femininity. Uh, I admit these women are attractive, but as I mentioned, they dominate the imagery of women ken in Kendall media, which fails to represent the broader female Kendall population. 
One additional point to mention that actually saddened me were the comments that most men posted in reaction to the monthly article on Kendo Nippon's Facebook page. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, the comments are creepy and sexualized in the way females are represented. Kendo Nippon did not delete these comments. Were the comments not deleted because this was part of the magazine's marketing strategy, given that the readership is mostly male? Uh, that's probably the case. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what is certain... Uh, I'm not sure, but what is certain is that the monthly article is very popular. So popular, in fact, that the article has been developed into a television program on Asahi TV. Uh, to be honest, if broad representation of female kendoka, especially senior female sensei, was available in these magazines, I probably would not feel this amount of disappointment and concern. I am by no means trying to devalue the kendo participation of women who are portrayed in the articles and TV series. The problem for me is that the imagery is dominant is the dominant representation and has managed to sexualize and trivialize female participation. I hope this post can encourage critical reflection on how we, as women, are represented in Kendo media and question if it represents our needs. To demonstrate how Kendo Nippon's article has sexualized young uh, female Kendoka, I posted a link to the Facebook post and associated comments. All the best, my friends. Uh, and then there's a, a, a link to the actual post, which we can see there, obviously, in Japanese. Um, so, uh, I read through that quite quickly. Um, <laughs> I think, I think you probably got some of the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, and if I'm not misunderstanding, uh, and if you think I'm misunderstanding, tell me, but, um, one, there's a few things that I think have been raised here that's super, super important, um, and definitely need to be considered. Um, and it sounds like, especially if we talk about this, uh, Kendo Joshi project from Kendo Nippon, mm. um, where, yeah, uh, they, they pick out these uh, women mm. um, to feature. And, yeah, the words that they use to describe them are very much based on their appearance or their sort of what they consider to be their feminine, what mm. would, could be considered as feminine characteristics. Uh, whereas when they pick out male uh, kendoka for articles and stuff like that, they don't use those sort of words that... You know, you don't often see like oh, like kakui or like uh, occasionally. Yeah, you might. But yeah, but it's not like the not feature. It's not their point, is it? Yeah. You know, like dandy That's or right. something yeah. like that. <laughs> like it's always about how strong their kamai is or something like that. <laughs> um, so you know, I totally. Uh, I totally get that, and I, I think that's the the point we're coming from here. Mm. Um, I think it's a problem, um, especially how they're represented in the media now. Not to. Not to defend mm. them, right? But I think the, um, there's two there's two sort of ideas probably behind it. And maybe not, maybe there is just one, but mm. I definitely agree with Kate about it's probably targeted towards a mainly male audience. I think so. But to be honest, you know, I did Kendo till I was 18, like, you know, before graduating the high school. But... I never bought that sort of candle. Yeah, candy, yeah. So I never let that. <laughs> it was always so, me buying it, wasn't it? <laughs> I first know that my younger brother just start like you know buying it. Yeah. That sort of things and oh, is it? There's a candle <laughs> magazine. <laughs> 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 to be honest. Fair enough. Fair enough. So. Well, yeah. I mean, I definitely think that's main, it. Main target. Yeah, I think so. Is towards men. I think there's that, and I think if they would, they would probably argue. And this is just being devil's ad advocate, really. But I think they would probably argue that um, probably in Japan, there's there could be an impression among women mm. that kendo is like a a kind of macho, masculine sport. Often one of the things that's uh, this used to describe kendo is that it stinks and that like, mm. you know, doing kendo isn't a really feminine thing to do. No, no. And I guess that what they would argue... Uh, and I'm not saying the right to argue this, by the way, but what they might argue is that they want to uh, present these women in this sort of feminine, cute way to pr to uh, appeal to women mm. that want to present themselves in that way. Yeah. I say, well, Kendall's for you as well. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that that's a good, a good or a bad thing, mm. but I, I, and I I'm not sure but that that's really enough, the thing. The mm. two dojos my daughters went to when yeah. they did it in Japan, like a, around their daughter's age, yeah. there are loads of girls, 
know, yeah, more girls actually, yeah, yeah. Boys, when I when our girls started Kendall, you know? yeah, there was more girls than boys. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely right. And I think that's mm. a pattern, actually, that's coming out now. Probably. Um, and I remember, I don't know if you remember, but when uh, they were in nursery, there was the cartoon uh, Pretty Cure, Pretty Cure, whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah. Um, one character did... One did of the Ken- yeah. characters yeah, did Kendall, right? So. Um, and so, uh, you know, I do think we're seeing more <clears throat> take up of Kendall by that. Mm. So, but in, in reference to the articles, though, um, I don't know. Um, and, you know, you could say that it's, it, it's potentially problematic in the first place that there's, you know, that they're trying to appeal to to sort of reinforce girls feeling like that those sort of, you know, kawaii sort of things mm. should be a part of their identity. I don't know. Um, I'm not really smart enough to come up with a good <laughs> analysis of that. But um, look, uh, I definitely agree, though, that if you go, I'm sure if you click on this, this article, some of the comments are super creepy from mm. the, the Japanese men. I'm sure they are. I'm sure I'm sure I, they are. I don't think that's only from Japan. Probably not. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, sorry. I, sh- I didn't, you know. But I mean, it's I'm talking because it's an article in Japanese. Okay. It's a Japanese thing. Um, probably not just from... I don't know. I've not read it. But um, I think there's definitely a cultural difference um, with the way that men and women are um, sort of treated in society. Uh, with lots of uh, non-Japanese countries and the way things are in uh, Asian countries and particularly in Japan. I don't know about many others, but when I lived in Japan, I definitely uh, noticed that, mm. uh, for example. So, um, you know, you mentioned, because because Kendo Nippon and stuff is, is mentioned, and I, I sort of had memories of buying the Kendo magazines mm. and there being like, you know, women on the front of it. Mm. I know it's happened in the past. Mm. Yeah. So I went and had a look mm. and had a look at the websites mm. of Kendo Nihon and Kendo Jidai uh, and had a look at the back numbers. Let's have a quick look at those. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, the homepage of Kendo Jidai, for example, and these are the, the back numbers from um, up to 2014. Um, now... You can see there, obviously, there are all males that are on there. One of them's a high school student as well. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, he's, a, he's a university student. So these aren't people that are mm-hmm. particularly high-graded senses. Um, some of them are. Of course, you've got people like, uh, you know, Hojo san there. He was the, um, I think, he was the seventh dan champion. Um, you've got Inodomi sensei, you've got uh, Sato Mitsunobu sensei there, stuff like that. You've got, you've got famous players there, of course you do. But, um, yeah, I mean, if we keep coming forward and forward, they're just not there. These are all all males on these. Yeah. So, you know, there's definitely a valid point here as we, as we come through. Um, there's definitely a valid point that that representation um, is definitely missing. Um, because I can't find one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't find one, uh, which is which is disappointing. Quite shocking, isn't it? Yeah, it is quite shocking, you know. Um, during the time, you know, some ladies' play has made a quite... Oh, know, amazing, yeah, there's some fantastic... Results. Yeah, and I, we'll talk about that in a minute, mm-hmm. actually, about the diff- the results that, that women have had. But um, if we have a look at the... This is the this is the Kendo Nihon, uh, Kendo Nippon uh, website. Uh, this is the, the, the Kendo Joshi section of the website. Uh, so you can see how they've made it all sort of cutesy and stuff like that. Um, I mean, no, no, no... No disrespect to the the ladies on here or anything. Uh, I d- literally don't know who any of them are. Um, here's their 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 back numbers, uh, and I'm not sure how far these go back. These look like the back to 2018. Yeah, 2018 there. Um, so again, these are all males, males, all males. Yeah, I, I can't, I can't. There's no again. You've got that's the that's the university student from before. Um, I mean, and these are all very very uh, you know very accomplished people. Um, Many of them are eighth dan senseis, or you've got people like, um, you know, Miyazaki Masahiro and stuff like that. Super famous people. These are books that they've produced, um, and then you, these are these are obviously old senseis, and yeah, of course, most of those are men. Um, I think the first female picture we get is this one, which is a picture of um, a dojo in Japan. Uh, that's uh, what's it, isn't it? Um, 
forgotten the name, that really strong dojo in Fukuoka. Ah, Josuka. Josuka, yeah. Um, there's a girl there. Um, so she's the, f- the first. Um, yeah, she's uh, probably the granddaughter of the sensei that the article's about. Uh, and then we've got, there's girls in that picture, because I think that's Wasada um, Kendobu or something like that. Um, and yeah, so, it, but that's, that's very recent. That's this year in May. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think there's definitely um, something to be said for that, mm-hmm. for the lack of representation when we look at the, um, you know, the, the actual accomplishments of women in Kendo, you know. Um, so I wonder, though, um, again, I'm, I, 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 if we talk about it from a sort of devil, devil's advocate point of view in a way, um, the the one thing to bear in mind is that women's Kendall, as it is now, is a relatively recent thing yeah. compared to men's Kendall. Um, for whether that's a good or a bad thing or right or wrong, I'm, that isn't what I'm saying. The fact that's is, fact, the yeah. fact is the fact. Um, to give you an example, um, the the first World Kendall Championships was in 1970, and of course it was only there was only men's divisions. Mm-hmm. Um, the first specific women's divisions of the World Kendall Championships wasn't until 1997. Right. Okay, so it's 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 mm-hmm. very it's Quite relatively young, recent. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not good. I get that. Yeah, that's not. But that's the fact of the matter. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not saying that's a good excuse for this. Um, but the the fact is, is I think that you know if we look at the All Japan Championships. We've had 67 All Japan Championships from 1953 was the first one, the men's mm-hmm. championships. Um, and the first women's, though, it's not as big a gap with, as it is with the world's. Um, that was from 1962. We've had 58 championships. Right. So it's not quite as big. Mm. So obviously women's kennel was a thing, mm. but it wasn't a big enough thing where there was a national team mm-hmm. until 1997. So there's, there's only been a Japanese national team for women, specifically for women, um, for a specific women's event in the world championships. I know there was a, like exhibition matches before that um since 1997 yeah. so uh the concept of of like a national team and these sort of elite level players is quite um new mm-hmm. in comparison and i think that's one of the reasons for example um that it's it, it isn't something that we've seen uh portrayed in the media as much that isn't to say of course that it shouldn't be it absolutely should be and it clearly from what we've just seen mm-hmm. It, it, it clearly needs more representation. Um, now, uh, Kate mentioned in the post about, um, obviously, representation of women over 40 mm-hmm. uh, and um, about higher graded women mm-hmm. uh, and specifically women eighth dance. Right. And I think that's a really interesting point. Yeah. Right. Because she mentioned like in our lifetime. I definitely think that's something that's on the cards. Yeah, I think so. Um, I definitely think it's something that we'll see um, in the future. Mm-hmm. And I think very quite soon, actually. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the fact is, is that eighth dan, um, it's, you know, it's a very tiny fraction of a percentage of people that pass eighth dan. Yeah. That's the fact of it, right? And it's people that generally have achieved something really quite substantial mm-hmm. in the kendo sphere world championships all japan champions people who have been teachers of successful uh mm-hmm. dojos or schools for many many years mm-hmm. and i think if you think about like um like i say like i say because the the history of women's kendall as a sort of established thing mm-hmm. is somewhat shorter than for men's kendall i think we're only starting to see the beginnings now yeah of those sort of players come through, uh, you know, in, on the women's side of things. Mm. Um, that doesn't mean there was no great players in the past, mm. but I don't think the infrastructure was there for a start um, until recently. Mm. Um, I think a really good example is, of course, uh, you know, Mur- Muriyama Chinata Sensei. Yeah. Um, arguably, well, not arguably, to be honest, I don't think you can argue it. She's one of the most successful Kendo car of all time. Um, I don't really know much about like a famous Kendo player because I wasn't super into it. No, it's not it's into it, but obviously I never been to the All Japan Championships and mm. stuff for myself. Yeah. 
but yeah, listen to Damrayama Chinatsan's name, I do still recognize her. She's that sort of yeah, yeah, super, yeah. superstar, super right? lady. Yeah, career. yeah. And I mean, you know, she's, she's, uh, I think she's the only, no, she's one of two people that managed to um, win the All Japan Ladies Championships, uh, championships three years in a row. Mm. Um, and uh, she's the only person that's done it in relatively recent times, within the last 20 mm. years. Um, and the reason that's important is because it, it's it's not actually, um, you know, we've got, we've got male superstars like Miyazaki Masahiro. He won six times. He yeah. won the All Japan Championship six times. But he never did more than uh, twice in a row. Mm -hmm. No one's done it three times in a row. Mm. Uh, so that's a massive achievement in it itself. Uh, Muriyama Sensei also, she did, she, she's won it five times in total. So like, wow. that's, yeah. isn't it amazing? The last time she won it, she's 37 years old. <laughs> it's amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I think that she's an example of someone that's likely to be the, the female eighth dan, I mean, and, and probably very that. soon. She'll probably mm. be the first one, if not. Mm. Um, if nothing else. So um, I do think that the... The players like her, I mean, she was like the first superstar mm -hmm. um, female kendoka for whatever reason, um, you know, before her. There were other famous players that were women, but same with Miyazaki Masahiro, actually, mm -hmm. to be honest. You know, you had the famous players before them, but no one was as famous as him. Mm -hmm. And I think Murayama uh, Sensei represents the same thing in the ladies', in the kendo, ladies kendo, yeah. yeah. Um so she's, um, well, she's 37 when she won it in 2011. So she's only going to be just coming up ready to do the eighth done. Um, probably like this year or next year or something like that. She's 46 this year. Isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, there you go. So, um, I think, I think she's a really good candidate for that. Um, and the other thing I was thinking about is, I think one of the, the difficulties, of course, is retention of women in Kendall, like women staying doing Kendall. Mm. Now, if you look at, like, we was looking through the results of the All Japan Championships, the mm. Ladies All Japan Championships, you know, right through from 1962 all the way through to 2019. Um, and what I find quite interesting is there's a, quite a lot of these are police officers, mm. And like I say, because obviously there's a different society, you know, there's different sort of societal norms in Japan mm. between men and women. And especially when women get married, things change. And that's, you know, whether that's right or wrong, that's, um, that's one thing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really feel like it's, you know, I've got my opinion on it, but it's not for me to sort of say too harshly about what another country does in terms of its society. But, um what you have is a lot of these like police officers, mm. you know, I think, you know, they might've been successful Kendoka when they were in the sort of twenties up to their early thirties. Mm. But when you're a, a police Tokuren player, and this happens with men too, mm -hmm. this happens with men too. Once they leave the Tokuren, they stop Kendall. They mm -hmm. stop Kendall. Yeah. There's hundreds of thousands probably of guys who, men who were police officers Kendall police officers and don't do Kendall and they'll never be sixth done, never mind seventh done or eighth done. You know, they, they'll just, they might do it once a week at the kid's dojo or something like that. Mm. But they ain't, they ain't on that track for superstardom mm. of being an eighth done. Um, because the, the percentage of uh, these police officers that are doing like the Tokuren, mm. that then after they pass the age where they can really be competitors, mm. stay on in a Kendall related role mm. is tiny. So because of that, obviously you have the same, I think you'll have the same sort of thing with the women. Mm. And because there's not as many women in the police force mm -hmm. doing Kendall, mm. the jobs for them to stay on <laughs> in a Kendall related role afterwards, they're just, I, I don't even none, know if there are it? any. Mm. There could be none. So <clears throat> I think, unfortunately, what you have is then is you have, if you look at, like, from 20 years ago, that sort of era, era the sort of um, the late 90s, early 2000s, there's some really, really uh, well-known uh, competitors that will win in the All Japan Ladies Championships. And 
I'd, I'd be surprised if they're still seriously doing Kendall, some of them. Mm. You know, um, whether they won it or not, whether they were that level of player, whether they, you know, because it was their job. It's not something that they did because they liked it so much. It's just what they did as part of their job. And then they were retired from that. Mm. And then probably they went on to doing normal police work or some of them, especially from 20 odd years ago, they'll have got married and they'll have stopped working when they had kids. Um, so unfortunately, because that's how things are there, how society is there, mm. that's suppressed um, a lot of these women rising up mm. to me- compared to men of their generation who are now taking Hattie mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Um but I, as I say, there's more and more of these ladies coming through that I think we will start to see that more because things are changing in yeah, a great way. Obviously. So with that all being said, um, and without this conversation dragging out a little bit too long, um, it's been quite a long one already. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing I did want to do is, look, um, the point of the, um, the post that, that Kate put up, I think is a really great great thing um, that she's highlighting that and it's something I hadn't thought of so much myself Mm. partly because I'm not really I haven't bought a Kendall Nihon or Kendall Jedi magazine for years and years Mm. like I I used to I I bought them for about the first three years of living in Japan Mm. and then I felt like I was just buying the same magazine over and over again (laughs) (laughs) I felt like it was repeating itself a lot um but that's that's the nature of these sort of magazines. That, that's not yeah. a representation on those companies at all, of course. Um, they're great magazines. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I can't tell them how to do their business or how to run their business. That's down to them and down to their readership. Uh, I agree that those creepy comments that they made on their uh, videos, they should, um, they should, they should be more... Uh, responsible about moderating those um i certainly wouldn't tolerate that on any of my channels um but uh the way i want to end this video is i think i want to talk a little bit about um two things uh one is uh about it's not just a problem for women Mm. all right there's there's more men in kendall than there is women that's that's i don't know if that's changing but there's more and more women coming into kendall Mm -hmm. both in japan and in uh, in in uh, the rest of the world, um, but I think men probably still outnumber women in most dojos. Yeah. Um, so it's something that men have to be aware of. All right, because it's not um, kendo isn't for men, uh, and it's not for women. It's for everybody. Yeah. Um, and it's it's there to benefit everybody, um, and there are um, you know there are things that men can do um, to. Uh, to sort of deal with this. And I think the main one is not engaging in this sort of um, kind of toxic environment. And toxic is probably the wrong word, but the, this sort of uh, sexist environment where you see posts like that and mm. then you write these sort of, you know, creepy comments and stuff mm. like that. That's not that's not cool, you know. Um, w- you know, women women should be uh, respected in Kendall uh, for their ability, not because of not nothing, nothing to do with their appearance Mm. um for a start um i know that there's um uh some research um by uh kate asked me to mention this um a chap called uh jean christophe hilary i think that's how you pronounce it um sorry if i haven't pronounced it right and you're watching this um but this is a a guy that's doing some research into this exact Mm -hmm. uh, issue so that's very interesting i'm very looking forward to seeing what he comes up with um but the final thing i'd like to finish on is we are also a part of the Kendall Media now, uh, the Kendall Show. Um, we've got almost 20,000 subscribers now on YouTube, so thank you very much, everybody, for <laughs> supporting us uh, in that respect. Um, but I think it would be irresponsible for us to just complain about this without actually um, trying to help the situation mm-hmm. somehow. And what I thought we could do is we could just talk about a little bit um, some... Um, exceptionally good examples of women in Kendall yeah, um, who are fantastic examples, not not necessarily role models for women. I think they're role models for everyone. Mm. Now, I, as I said at the start of this video, Miyuki here has been one of the biggest influences. In fact, probably the biggest influence on my own <laughs> Kendall, right? Like, how what was I like when you first met me? Mm. Like, I didn't even know how to tie my borger properly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you've, you've been, she's, she's been the big, probably the biggest influence on me. Mm. And 
as well as that, there's there's been several uh, female senseis and people that I'm known in Japan that have uh, that have helped me a lot yeah. uh, in Kendo. Um, so, you know, um, I, it, it's not like only women should learn from women senseis either. That's true. Because you know, there's there's some fantastic um, examples out there. So I thought we could highlight a few. So that if you're watching this and you want to know where to find, um, you know, good content um, from uh, female uh, examples or examples of amazing Kentucky that happen to be female, um, mm. then maybe we could make a little bit of a, a list of that. Yeah. Um, but I'd, I'd urge everybody to sort of look into these players because they're absolutely amazing and there's loads to learn from them. Yeah. Um, so the first one that we mentioned, we already mentioned, was Murayama mm -hmm. uh, Chinatsu-sensei. Um, I'll, I'll pull up a video. Okay, so here's a video of uh, Murayama Chinatsu-sensei's uh, Ippons. I actually posted this to the Kendo Star blog. Yeah. Um, I, I post loads of videos to the Kendo Star blog uh, and I, I don't account for whether they're male or female. I, fi I find great videos and I po post them. Mm. I was looking through this the other day actually though and I actually found that there's quite a few uh, videos of, of, of women in it but um, that wasn't necessarily intentional interestingly. Mm. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, Murayama uh, Chinata Sensei, she's been one of the most uh, successful Kendo of all time. Um, so definitely go and check out some of the videos featuring, featuring her. Um, she's just a legend. Yeah. A legend. So. Especially she's really tall. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. Which quite rare for, as a Japanese Yeah, lady. it is, yeah. it is, it is. Um, but, but I you... thought because she's tall, mm. then lots of female from like a non-Japanese, like a European or American countries have yeah. got like a taller women. Yeah. So they could learn from her that, kendo. That's a really good how point. How to fight against the smaller, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. That's definitely a good point. That's a good, really good mm. point. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, she does really, really straight clean yeah, kendo yeah. as well. Like one thing, and we talked about this before, one thing that like is a bit of a pet peeve of mine is like... Uh, in the, the sort of Japanese kendo circuit, especially with women, you have this kind of, I call it uh, fura fura kendo, <laughs> um, where they don't have a solid, you know, mm. base. And it's almost like they're appealing that they're like a, just a weak mm. girl. Um, and it doesn't have to be like that. And the, 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 the women we're going to talk about, none of them have that sort of kendo, you know. So uh, so that's, that's one example there. Um, another example we're going to talk about um, is uh, Matsumoto Mizuki. Yes. Yeah, uh, just amazing, eh? Amazing. Yeah. Let's and bring... I saw her kendo when she was a high school student in Gyokuryuki the first time. As soon as seeing her kendo, I was like, wow. She really <laughs> I remember, yes. Yeah. I, was, I was super impressed. Yeah, I remember we watched it together. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's you know... Um, Matsumoto has been there. Uh, I've, I've met her a few times actually mm -hmm. now. Um, it's a really nice, nice girl. But she's um, she's one of the things about her is she is the only person mm -hmm. to have won the world championships twice in a row, male or female. Wow! Like, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Uh, let's let's get up some uh, some videos of her so we can see what she looks like. Okay, so this this is a video from the last world championships mm -hmm. uh, which she won in the uh, individuals. Um, she's a player in white here. Uh, and she's playing against another person on our list, uh, mm -hmm. Yamamoto Mariko. She's super famous. Everybody knows yeah. about uh, Yamamoto. Um, but you can see both of them, they've got a really solid kamae, just the really nice straight kendo. Yes. Um, you know, it's it, it's really, uh, really inspirational to me, certainly. Mm. It's just, you know, it, it's not really tricksy or anything like that, just... Mm. I know they move a lot, but and solid strikes, solid strikes. Okay, so that's that's uh, Matsumoto. So I want we we talked about you know Murayama Sensei and Matsumoto, uh, Matsumoto Mizuki, Yamamoto Mariko, <clears throat> but I thought we could talk about a few that are a little bit less uh, well known to probably people who've taken up kendo quite recently. Mm -hmm. Um, so some that stick out to me are um, Subota uh, 
Yuka san, mm -hmm. for example, uh, she was like, um, I Mouse think she's called, Kuzno. she's called Kozuno, mm -hmm. Kozuno. So, uh, she, her name is, uh, Kozuno Yuka Sensei, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, she's fantastic as well. She's a really, really strong player, mm -hmm. um, on the Japanese team. Um, I think about her is, yeah, she was famous before she got married. Yeah, yeah. And then she's still, like, okay, she's one of the rare female kendoka in Japan at the moment, like a famous kendoka. She still carry on doing kendo yeah. in a top level, you know. Definitely. Top level. Definitely. After she got married. So yeah. That's why she now is called. Yeah, I think that's a really good example, yeah. actually, because I, th I think she had a child she, as yeah, well. She um, and she's uh, she was a police officer. I'm not sure if she still is. Mm -hmm. um, but if she is, I, I don't think she's like a, a Tokurai member or anything like that. I don't think Okayama Kenke has got that female Tokurai. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but yeah, um, she's a fantastic, fantastic player to look out mm -hmm. for. Um, two more uh, that I definitely want to talk about. Uh, and these, these are people that I, uh, I, I've actually met. One of them I, I know quite well. Um, Shimokawa Mika mm -hmm. uh, and Ogata uh, Yuki. She, they, they, those two are just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they both are around my yeah. generation. Yeah. In, you know, so in early forties. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember the first time I saw uh, Shimokawa-san's kendo. Mm. It was at the World Championships yeah. in Brazil. Mm. Um, now I didn't speak Japanese then, so I didn't really know much about the Japanese. Uh, seen so much but I remember seeing her kendo and being like wow she, she's amazing yeah. um, she's she's got in a good way she, you didn't recognize watching her kendo that she 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 was like a lady so no 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 yeah. well that's what I mean yeah. and I think the, I think the same for a lot of these yeah, yeah. Uh, women but especially yeah. I think it's a she's got that sort of kanoya kendo yeah right so like really solid. Yeah, solid it's like yeah. solid you know mm. um and you know yeah Sh shimokasan uh and then your ogata sensei is the same right yeah, also and right? Kanya, right yeah yeah same right um l let's get some video up so we can have a look at what we're talking about so this is a video from the uh from the old japan kendo federation it's not a great quality one or anything but you know go go and search these yourself i'm going to sit through and go through them all but there's you know, if you go and search these, there's so much out there. Um, Shimokawa san is on, uh, uh, wow. she's in white. Um, <laughs> it's solid, solid, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely go and check out uh, uh, Shimokawa Mika sensei and uh, Ogata Yuki sensei as well. Um, and uh, the other one that we was gonna talk about was uh, Shodai. Mm -hmm. uh, Sayuri uh, san. Um, her previous name was Ishizuki. Ishizuki san. Uh, I think she won it. Did she win it twice? Twice. Twice, yeah, right? She won the well. All Japan Ladies yeah. Championships. Another fantastic player. Um, Keisho, I think she's. Uh, I think so. She, 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 I think she's playing that. Um, is she also like a mom now? I, I think they had a kid Probably. too. I, I'm not totally sure. On that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I said, I don't buy the magazines or anything mm -hmm. anymore. So. But, um, you know, uh, yeah. There's there's plenty of of ladies kendo to go out and consume mm -hmm. and just learn from whether you're male or female. Mm -hmm. you, you know, don't write off women's kendo. If if you're a man out there, if you don't write off women's kendo, there's so much to learn from these fantastic sensei. Mm -hmm. um, there really is. Um, so I think with that said, uh, I think that's where we're going to close the video because it's been quite long. Um, I did say that at the start. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, um, I totally agree with the points that Kate's raised in that uh, mm. post. I definitely think it's an issue. Um, I hope that we can do something to help with that. Make sure you keep an eye on the Kendo Star blogs because I'll, <laughs> I'll always be posting uh, great Kendo videos, whether it's men or women, but it's purely on the the uh, the merit of the kendo that's happening. Yeah. I'm not interested in in who's who's kawaii or <laughs> who's genki or who's akari. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm interested in what solid kendo is going on. Mm. All right. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> uh, it's been great to have Miyuki with me. Uh, let me know what you thought. Would you like to hear more from Miyuki Sensei? Uh, <laughs> this is my sensei. Uh, and um, 
yeah, don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, if you like what we do, shop at Kendall Star, um, like, share, subscribe. Um, just behind me, Yuki, you'll see there's a scientific graph. Don't, don't go out of shot, come here, sir. That's it. <laughs> the scientific graph behind me, Yuki, that tells you what happens if you ring the Kendall bell, you have to go to subscribe. Then there's a bell, you ring that and you get better at Kendall. Did you know that? No. Yeah, if you go to the our channel, which I know you've already subscribed to, yeah. you go that and there's a bell. And if you ring that, you get better at Kendall. There's a scientific, I'll, te I'll teach you the science afterwards. All right, it's scientific proof. So <laughs> thanks for joining me. See you next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>